Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2014 Lakeside World Championships and we continue the men's second round here at the home of World Darts, the Lakeside! We now introduce a Dutch international top of Ghent finalist, it's Rick Hofstra! We now introduce a former World Cup winner with England. He's the 2012 British Open champion, the assassin, Martin Ackie! So the conquerors of the numbers eight and nine seeds face off in tonight's first match of the men's tournament. Rick Hofstra starts impeccable as he saw off close friend Renko van Eyden in round one. His first ever victory on the lakeside stage might have come almost ten years to the day since his debut here. But it couldn't have been more emphatic as he won all nine legs of darts with brilliant finishing and an average of 91. Martin Atkins also won comfortably, seeing off Jeffrey de Graaf in straight sets, sealing the match with a brilliant ball and a 135 finish. Now, he is one game away from his second quarter-final here. Martin's finishing wasn't brilliant. Down in the mid-20s in terms of a percentage, and he struggled hitting double top. Scoring was pretty impressive through his first nine darts, though, averaging more than 100. That was better than Rick's. Rick's finishing absolutely impeccable. He only missed five darts at a double, all match against Van Eyden. So we guaranteed one unseeded player in the quarterfinals from these two. Which will it be? Anthony Dundas with the call. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First set, first leg is Rick to throw first. Game on. 36 years of age, Rick. So the match begins. 85. One of the top players from Yorkshire. Has been for many years, Martin. Hills from Leeds. 100. And Rick Hofstra from Snick near Heron and Vane. 125. Didn't hit a 180 in an otherwise flawless performance against Remco van Eyden in the first round. Martin, for his part, hit five in the match against the Graf. Almost the best of any player in the first round. Well, the bookies have uh, Rick at uh, 125 to one. After his uh, match, what I saw, I think that's uh, very good odds. I may have a shilling on that. 46.
Another player already found their range up to this point. Probably go for the ball here, Rick, to uh, leave himself with a finish. Makes Amazing. hit it as well. The only sign that perhaps that accuracy around the doubles could be here again. And just pull that one. It's a bit more. Push it out further. 41. Rick, you require 142. So, trouble 20 to leave 82. Could go for ball. Yes. So, 17 leaves double top. 102. Martin still on 213. Rick, you require 40. First chance for the Dutchman. Double 10. Twenty. Well, three darts at a double. Martin, Missed them all. Well, he had a brilliant time around the doubles in that first game. Trouble 20 coming in. Trouble 19. Leaves double tops. Rick Hoss is coming back for double 10. Seven. Rick, you require 20. Three darts in his hand. 5. OK, no Martin Atkins on 60. Martin, you require 60. So a real chance for Martin that he wouldn't have expected. Missed the big 20, but still has a shot. Only one dart, though, at double top. 20. And he's missed it. Rick, you require 20. Finishing betraying the nerves of these two early in the game. Double five now for Rick. He missed it once in that last leg. Yeah, Hits it this time. It's on the first leg. Rick Ostra. Second leg is Martin to throw first. Game on. Funny, Tony, how these things work. He missed only five darts at doubles in that first match against Van Eyden. He's missed six starts at a double 95. in the first leg against Martin Atkins. I can never tell at this game, honestly. It's unreal. Depends how you get onto that stage, how you feel. If you're comfortable. And once you get your throw going, the fluency does the rest. I think sometimes you don't realise when you get on that stage, you, you're nervous, you know, you, but you are. 125. It's the second time in this match already that he's got the first two darts in the lipstick. The treble 20 wasn't made up with the third dart, which was a single five. Uh, dropping short, have to try for 19s. 96. Not into the rhythm yet, isn't uh, Martin? 40. So an advantage of 22 plus these for Rick. Martin's first leg with the darts. Gets the 25. On a double digit finish, Rick, when he comes back. This has been a leg to forget for Martin. 95, 93. 41. 58, 40, Rick 41. And Rick with a chance. Yeah, trouble 20 leaves double 14. Oh, wrong bed. So, oh, trouble 19, it could be the shot, yeah, double eight that leaves. Oh, that's no wrong bed, he's bust, he's gone back to 88. But no out shot for Martin Atkins. 100. Rick well, there's a familiar 80. face, Wayne Mardell. Nice to see you here, Wayne. Doing a great job. Martin, you require 74. 
12 of 14. It's pulling them up. Seems to be pulling them, Jim. Yeah. Not getting through. Look at that. 34. Very frustrated with himself, which of course can exacerbate the problem. Not a memorable leg, but it still counts for one. Double top for Rick Hofstra for a 2 0 lead. Now double 10. Yes, Hits it this sure. time. Leg. leg against the Rick darts Hofstra. for the Dutchman. And he's Third two up in the first. To first. Game on. It's nice to see Wayne here. It was on this stage where he won the teenage championship. Many moons ago. 100. Fantastic career subsequently as a uh, player and broadcaster as well. Great insight. 41. So casual, isn't it? I don't mean Wayne. <laughs> 58. A bit disappointed that Wayne wasn't tempted by the fancy dress. His father's a character as well. <laughs> 81. This is Rick's third lakeside appearance, his first in nine years, and he'd never previously won 80. a match on the lakeside stage, losing controversially to uh, Mervyn King in 2004. It was a match in which uh, Mervyn complained that the hockey wasn't of the correct length. I'm not suggesting that... Uh, 39! ...was the only reason why he won for one moment. And then 3-2, he lost to Tony West the following year. And he hasn't been back since. Well, I can't believe uh, what's happening with Martin Atkins because he's a, a very high scorer. One shot at a double. 60. Rep you require 170. But the scorer is looking to get down to a double. But here's an out shot. 170. Another treble. And leave the ball. 105. 105. Well, you can't afford to write sets off. That goes without saying. But I think Martin's... Mindset will be at the end of this 60. one if he is to lose this leg. Just forget about 65. it. It's a leg that Hofstra had the darts. Just forget it happened. Double 16 for Hofstra for the first set. And yes, he's got it. Short, on the first set. Rick Hofstra. And he's still Second yet to lose a single leg here in the leg side this year. We saw Jackie there. He was in his. Uh, Position, 45. For the Belgians. 45. Having one or two words with the referee. Huh? The assassin. 45. So there a problem, perhaps, in Martin's throwing arm. Not that you'd know it from those two darts. Fills it up. Hopefully that will be just the panacea he needs. If he is struggling with injury. 100. And whatever he did walking up there, it worked. 41. I'd hate to have seen you if you had. 85. Boy, George was here this afternoon. I don't know if he's still around. 
He did come incognito Martin as well, George, as you would imagine. <laughs> Lakeside has long been the culture club of the darting disciples. This could be the first leg of the tournament that Hofstra has lost. But this is a decent response. 140. Come on, Martin. Martin, you require 40. Double shot. Straight in. Double send. Yes, that's it. Yes, that's short. On the first leg. Martin Atkins. Second leg is Rick to throw first. Game on. 13th leg of the tournament for Hofstra. The first one in which he's lost. Good response, sir. Excellent responses. First maximum of the tournament. Up the goal. This is the show. 42. Oh, he's clearly struggling here, Tony. Oh, what a leg of darts this is. Very close to another maximum as well, lad. One eight two one three five. The problems are all in the corner 30. of Martin Atkins. You saw him shake his right arm, try and get a little bit of movement. There you go. Horrible timing to be afflicted by any kind of injury when you're trying to try and get into the. Quarter final at Lakeside for only the second time in uh, an illustrious career. No, he's shaking his head, 30. everything. Rick, you require 86. Just had a word with Anthony Dundas again there. He had the 54. ball. Didn't go for it, understandably, with Martin back. Oh, 399. 42, 30, 30. There's certainly something wrong. 100. Rick, you require 32. So had more problems. Double 16. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, game short. And the second leg. Rick Hofstra. Third leg is Martin to throw first. Game on. Mind you, that last leg, he had three ton pluses, did Rick Hofstra. I don't think the 43. arm would have made any difference on that leg. Sure, he could take a five-minute break and just see if there is any problem. One hundred. Now you can see he's throwing them up, and they're all coming down. Thirty-nine. That first start was for total twenty. It'll be sad. 59. No, there's definitely some something going on. But uh, Hofstra, all he has to do is carry on. That's better. Has he got it back? 81. Well, if he came onto the stage and they knew he had the injury, I'm sure he would have uh, done something, bandaged it up or something. 100. Mind you, when you get to the World Championship, the leaving towel, throwing left-handed. 41. Yeah, no consistency with the throw. Rick, you require 156. But he's got to par carry on as Austria. As well as uh, a match here, two trouble twenties, double eighteen he wants. Seventy-two. 
60. Well, you can only feel for the man from Rawdon in Yorkshire. Nearly every dart is accompanied by a rueful shake of the head. Horrible, horrible day for him. Double 18 for Hofstra. The 2 1 yes, in the second. Rick right, let's see if Four anything happens here. To first. Game on. Well, he's not asked for the game to be stopped. Yeah, you can see him there, look. Rubbing the elbow. 84. Just throwing them anywhere. Oh, what a shame. I think Martin has, has said there that he wants to quit. Rick asking for clarification. The game goes on for now. You wouldn't wish this on your worst enemy. Absolutely horrible for Martin Atkins. 100. Well, there has been a precedent back in the late 80s. Alan Evans, 1987, did lead the stage twice. He was struggling, but came back on, completed the match, and did, in fact, win it. But this just extraordinary, really. Leave the stage for five minutes, and if he gets no better, he feels he has to go off. Well, that's 44. it. The match Reckon is over. Rickoff stroke goes through. Those dying a thousand deaths out there, Martin Atkins. Double Stop. twelve. Fifteen left. Seven. Double four. Double four. Twenty. Well, his facial expressions tells it all. Is it done, man? 134. There you are, look Rick at the crowd there. Yeah. Good support, yeah, there it is. The well, it's 2 0 in sets. Uh, looks like it's all over. He's had a word with Anthony Dundas. He's uh, explaining the problem in full to Rick, making his apologies as well, I have no doubt. But yeah, shake of the hand. I think Martin is having to chuck it in because of injury. Oh, what a horrible day for him. Just has conceded a walkover for Rick Hofstra, who makes it through in bizarre circumstances to the quarterfinals. I'm sure a statement will be made to the crowd here, it who will. will totally understand the situation. They'll all be cheering him off. That's what it's like. But... Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we need a time out due to an injury to Martin Atkins. We're going to assess the situation with our tournament director and we'll be back with the information very shortly. Thank you. Well, let's hope it's good news. We don't like this. At the moment, it's not a concession. Martin Atkins has gone backstage to be assessed. He's got a five-minute break uh, that he can take. Wayne Williams, the tournament director, is the man who will be dealing with this situation. You can see... Uh, yes, thanks very much, Jim. Well, it's worrying times for Martin, and such a shame the Leeds Assassin's been a quarter-finalist here before, as you know. Let's see if we can get in. It's uh, Trina Gulliver, actually, who's doing... a. Uh, 
a little bit of uh, massage on Martin. Martin, just, just clarify exactly what the pain is here. Uh, basically, uh, I had a practice over the Christmas period and New Year's Day I threw a few darts and that summit went click and it's hurt basically ever since. And I was worried about the first game I played in the tournament and then I had some DP on some painkillers and it seemed all right, went up there, played okay. And then today it's been really painful all day and I've tried the DP and the painkillers again and uh, to be honest I was doubtful of whether I was going to go out and play at all and I thought well I'll give it a go, see how it goes, a bit of adrenaline might just take the edge off and uh, I said to, to uh, Anthony who's refereeing I says I think I'm going to have to pull out because it's so painful, it's so painful and you know, you, you, if you can't let go of them then you know what's the point of prolonging it like you know what did a quick question did you get any diagnosis after it went click on new year's day did, did you seek any professional help have you got any idea as to what exactly has happened no not really to be honest i thought like well just rest it until we got here and then as we got here it was like a bit twingy but all right and i think i, I think i basically just pulled a muscle or something like that or but uh you know and then after the first game first game went really well no I had no pain up there the first game and then got up the next morning it was painful and I thought well I'll just rest it until the next game which is what I've done not really practiced as much as I like to have done and uh, and then uh, bang it's it's got up there and after like the first set I was like oh, I was sweating with pain feeling sick with the pain so well look I guess I guess the most important question is everyone you most of all is is hoping that this match will continue is there any chance uh, i mean trainers giving you the massage you've had the db is there any chance that, that you might feel well enough to continue this match where, where are we well let me have six darts on the board now and see if there's any pain there if there's pain there then it's no point me coming on to be honest okay so six starts here for martin atkins he's had a little bit of massage from trina that problem on new year's day something went click on his elbow got through the first round and he's not happy he's uh, he might go another three or is that it martin i'll have another three, I'll have another three darts but uh, spray it. well spray it out okay a little bit of uh, deep heat spray going on it's uh, dramatic scenes here at lakeside and this is the last way that we wanted any kind of uh, result in this match the deep heat's going on again three more darts and then we'll find out whether the Leeds assassin is calling a halt to his assault here to get through to the quarterfinals. He's been there before a few years ago, as I'm sure Jim's told you in the commentary box, but that's a real shame. And this looks as though he can't throw, he's not happy, he's not comfortable. And this is not the way Martin wanted his campaign to come to an end here at the 2014 BDO World Championship. A real shame here. So Martin Atkins, the Leeds assassin, his campaign has come to an end, and that is absolutely a real say, shame. I'd just like to say uh, I'm sorry to the fans and everything, but uh, it's an injury that I can't play darts at the moment. I can't let go of the dart. It's too painful. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, started off so well and was looking forward to going well in the tournament, but. Uh, that's one of them things, isn't it? You know, what can I do? I can't play. Well, Martin, hard luck. It's, uh, it's not the way you wanted to, uh, to finish this tournament. Hopefully, we'll see you back here next year. So dramatic scenes down here in the uh, players' room. I'm sure the statisticians will tell us whether this has happened before, and uh, I'm sure it won't be the last time this occurs. But uh, we have Glenn Durrant against Alan Norris coming up shortly. Remember, Norris knocked out Scotty Two Hotty Waits, the defending champion on Saturday. Glenn Durrant, the Middlesbrough missile, will be back on form. He knocked out Mike Day in the first round. That one's still to come, but the news here from Lakeside right now is that, unfortunately, it's all over for Martin Atkins from Leeds. Well, ladies and gentlemen, an unprecedented situation here at Lakeside, and it isn't good news. Sadly, Martin Atkins is unable to continue the match, but uh, we would like to bring both players up here. Sadly, he's injured and uh, unable to continue, but as he leaves the competition, Martin Atkins.
I'd just like to uh, say I apologise. Uh, I had an injury on New Year's Day, managed to get through the first game, and today I'm really in pain in my arm, and I just can't, honestly cannot carry on playing. And so I wish Rick the best in the next round. Sorry about that. Thank okay, you. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Martin Atkins. And ladies and gentlemen, let's not forget now we have a Dutchman through to the quarterfinals. Martin leaves the stage, but please can you also show your appreciation to Rick Hofstra?